First reading, a reading from the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 13 and chapter 53, verse 12. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up, before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The Word of the Lord. Second reading. A reading from the letter of Hebrews, chapter 4 verses 14 to 16 and chapter 5 verse 7 to 9 since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast to our confession for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, 
so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The Word of the Lord My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we commemorate the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Friday celebration. Jesus suffered. Our Lord died not for his own sins. Jesus never sinned against God and one another, but our Lord suffered and died for all our sins. To bring us salvation, to bring us redemption. And our Lord died on the cross. Cross wasn't a kind of a, a punishment that the Jewish people used to give. It was introduced by the Roman authorities. In Rome, if someone has done something wrong to the society people, they will be given the punishment on the cross. Now, Romans have decided that Jesus also should have that punishment. The cross is a sign of defeat in the eyes of people during the time of Jesus. Jesus would have seen people dying on the cross. Now Jesus being innocent is also given that same agony, that same death. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus brought victory to the cross. People thought that it was the greatest kind of a, a situation where people call them that they have defeated and they were not in that position of receiving that punishment. But Jesus brought that cross to a higher position, saying that it is through the cross that you will be able to really become victorious people. We Christians always wear the cross. When we go out of our houses, we always make the sign of the cross. When we start praying, we make the sign of the cross which was called something else. But now this cross has become a sign of victory. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus died on the cross to bring us salvation. You know how he died, stretching his hands, which shows that Jesus loves everybody. Jesus wants to embrace you and me, my brothers and sisters. Jesus wants to really have all of us as his children. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect upon the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, we, we really cry today because be Jesus being innocent, now carrying this cross and having enormous amount of difficulties, mockery on the road. What a situation, my dear brothers and sisters. Jesus wasn't a misfit in the society. Jesus never kind of no, uh, did wrong things in the society. The suffering and death on the cross is given to the people who were misfit in the society, who destroyed the society, who disturbed the society, who really did wrong things to people. But our Lord, who went around preaching the good news, 
who went around healing people, who went around and performing miracles, my dear brothers and sisters, who went around and raised dead people back to life. Our Lord, who had done all these things, now was given this terrible death on the cross. Lord courageously took up this situation. Jesus would have gone to heaven without struggling, without undergoing these difficulties, friends. But our Lord never wanted that. What the intention of our Lord Jesus Christ is to fulfill the will of the Father. The will of the Father is that Jesus should suffer, Jesus should die for the people, and Jesus will be raised from the dead. And that's the glorious resurrection. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, it is because of our sinful situations that Jesus had to die on the cross. So are we going to remain in that same status of sin? Then we are again and again crucifying the Lord, nailing our Lord onto a cross. We never want to do that, friends. We never want to crucify the Lord. But if you are going to continue the same in our lives, we will be definitely doing that. So on this day, what we are in invited is to really reflect, come back to our lives, go into the deep down of our hearts and see where we stand and what we are doing. Are we still crucifying the Lord because of our acts against ourselves and one another, friends? We will ask the Lord to help all of us. The Lord who is dying on the cross, the Lord who is suffering on the cross, We'll ask the Lord to help all of us to say, Lord, pardon all our sins. As the Lord pardoned the sins of those, who, those the, the thieves who were on each side, my dear brothers and sisters, Lord, and also the, uh, Jesus pardoned the sins of the, 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 the people who gave all these sufferings to him, especially the soldiers. Lord, they do not know what they are doing. Likewise, my dear brothers and sisters, let us ask the Lord to pardon all our sins because sometimes we do not know what we are doing, but the Lord will give us that spirit of him so that we'll be, we are, our minds and hearts will be enlightened to become better people. We'll die with the Lord and we'll rise with the Lord to a new life. Amen. Sweet.